Hello, this is Math 2270 coming to you from the College of DuPage, summer of 2020, and the topic of this uh, lecture is linear first order differential equations. A linear first order differential equation is of this form a1 of x dy dx plus a0 of x y is equal to g of x. So it is linear in the variable of y. Now, we have to put this in standard form, and there are two elements to putting in this into standard form. The first is we have to divide all the way through by a1 of x. This actually is kind of a big deal because sometimes a1 of x will have roots, and this gives rise to a complicated issue that is called singular differential equations that we will discuss later in this course. But here we're just saying pretend it's not 0. And so we divide all the way through. So this becomes dy dx. And then I have a 0 of x over a 1 of x, and I'm going to call that p of x, and that is times y is equal to, and this is going to be g of x divided by a 1 of um, x, and we're going to call that f of x. So this is the standard form. You must have something in this standard form to solve this. Trust me with this warning. Uh, this chart is way more important than many people think and it can lead you to problems if you don't follow this format uh, pretty exactly. Okay, now we're going to assume there's some magic function, and m is the way magic begins, and so we're going to use the Greek m, mu, and we're going to change the independent variable from x to t, just because that's what these notes do, and this is going to be an integrating factor. So it's going to make this all work. It's going to be a magic function. So we'll think through that, and we'll say, okay, let's take this magic function, this mu of t, and multiply all the way through the standard form by this, and we get this kind of an expression. And furthermore, we're going to insist that mu prime of t is equal to mu of t times p of t. So that is mu prime of t. Now the nice thing about that is that means that here I will have mu of t times dy dt plus mu prime of t times y, this is really the derivative of mu of t times y by the product rule. That's key to what we're doing. So you see, when we have that, we can integrate both sides. So we have uh, mu prime, or we have the derivative of mu of t, y of t is equal to mu of t times g of t. So I integrate both sides, and I get this. And then I can solve for mu of t by dividing all the way through by mu of t. Now, you don't want to memorize uh, this at all, but um, this shows you that that's kind of the mechanics that we went through. And um, so, again, there is the uh, this. this. And I, my tip is you can be kind of fast and loose with some of these constants, and you can take t, c to be 0 in this instance. Okay, so now... Uh, remember that we insisted that mu of t times p of t is equal to mu prime of t. That means that mu prime of t divided by mu of t is p of t. So we can integrate both sides, and we get that the ln of mu of t plus k is equal to the integral of p of t dt. You want to write some of this down so that you're actually following it. And then what we're going to do is move the constant to the other side, and we're going to exponentiate both sides like we've done many times in this course. When we do that, we find that the integrating factor is going to be mu of t is equal to the integral of, it's e, to the integral of p of t dt plus k. Now that k is another constant, and so on and so forth, and that would be e to the k, and we can move that k out here, being fast and loose with the constants, but we can not have a problem if we take this k to be 1. So you see, this is the formula for the integrating factor once you have it in standard form. So here's the solution process. Put the differential equation in the correct initial form. This is key. Find the integrating factor at mu of t using the equation that's at the top of this chart. Multiply all the way through the differential equation by mu of t. And I always do this. I verify that the left-hand side it is, in fact, the product rule, just to check to make sure that I didn't make a calculation mistake. Then you integrate both sides, and then you solve for y of t. That's the process. Uh, let's see how you can do with this. So find the solution to the following differential equation. dy dt is equal to 9.8 minus 0 0.196 times v. 
Let's see how you did. Well, you have to move things around to get it into the standard form. But now we know that mu of t has to be e to the integral of 0 0.196 dt. So that means this is my mu of t. So I multiply my equation in standard form all the way across by e to the 0 0.196 t. So I do all of that. Then I check to see, oh, is this really the derivative of this? And it is. So now I can integrate both sides. And when I integrate this side, I'm integrating the derivative, so I will get this. And on the other side, if you do the calculation, you should check this calculation, but you get this. And we put plus perhaps another constant of integration. But we can group those constants together, and, and that's fine. And so what we have is we really want to know what v is. So we're going to divide by v, and I'm playing fast and loose with the constants now. I'm saying, oh, this constant over here that was c minus k is just going to be called c. So I will divide all the way through by e to the 0 0.196, and I'll get v of t is equal to this. Now, for different values of c, you see the, you, these are what you get. and But this will die off as t becomes greater, and the rate at which it happens will depend on what c is. So this will go to 0 eventually, regardless of what c is, and that is called a transient portion of this solution. And here you see the graphs of that for several values of c. Let's solve this initial value problem then. Um, and so you know what to do. Let's see how you did. Well, this is really what we solved before, but we can use the initial condition to find out what c is, and so at the uh, c has to be minus 2. So at the end of this problem, we find out v is equal to 50 minus 2 e to the minus 0 0.196t. See you in chapter 7.1.